we're going to continue looking at examples of how to graph linear inequalities here on examples four, five, and six. So let's start with example four. Y is greater than or equal to X minus five. So remember the two questions that we need to ask ourselves are, do we use a dashed or solid line? And where is the solution region? So the first one I look, it's already in slope intercept form for me. So I have a Y intercept of negative five. So down five, I have a slope of one. So up one, right one, up one, right one, all the way across the grid, and then down one, left one. And we have to ask ourselves first, what type of line do I use? And so since it's greater than or equal to, I'm going to use a solid line. So let me grab a solid line. It's going to go through all of my points. And the next question I ask is, where is the solution region? And so for this one, I'm going to use the logic approach. My statement says y is greater than. So if I'm thinking about shading, y is greater than. So if I'm thinking about shading, then I have to ask myself, where are my greater y values? Are they above the line or are they below the line? And so take a look. On your y-axis, this is y is greater than, so you're focusing on the y-axis. Where are your larger y values? Are they above this line or are they below this line? And so all your larger y values are up here. And so then that represents my solution region. Everything in that area above all of those points satisfy that inequality. So let's try example five. Now example five, you look is y is greater than the absolute value. So for this one, I'm actually dealing with an absolute value graph. And so remember for absolute values, your graphs are v-shaped. And we're going to apply the idea of transformations for this one. So first, y is greater than the absolute value of x minus 2. So there is no h or k. There is no h here with x, so h is 0. Your k is negative 2. And so translation-wise, this means I don't move left or right, but I go down two units. And so remember, in the original absolute value graph, I'm just going to sketch it so we can see it. 0, 0 is a point, absolute value 1, 1, 2, 2. Negative 1 is 1, absolute value negative 2 is 2. And just so we can see it briefly, this is the original absolute value graph. Now I'm telling you the translation is you take this graph and you go down two units. So I'm going to take this graph and I'm going to go down one, two units. Since it is greater than, that does mean I use a dashed line. And now we have to figure out where do we shade. And so the way I'm going to figure out how to shade here is I'm going to use the test point approach. And so the test point I'm going to use, I take a look, 0, 0 is not on the line, on the absolute value graph. So I'm going to use the test point 0, 0. So plug in 0 for y. Is 0 greater than the absolute value of 0 minus 2? Absolute value of 0, 0. So is 0 greater than 0 minus 2, which is negative 2? And the answer is yes. That's a true statement. So what that means is my solution region is in the region that contains this point. So it's everything inside that V shape. And so here is my solution region.
So when you're graphing an absolute value inequality, you use the idea of transformations, of translations to determine how to set up your graph. And then I would use the test point approach. So let's do the same idea for number six. Y is greater than or equal to the negative of the absolute value of 3x. So remember how we can kind of do this one. You know, it's negative, which remember, that means A is negative 1. So it reflects over the x-axis. Which means it's opening down. And so what I do here is we learn there's also that one shortcut um, for some of these that we learn. You have a slope of 3, but it's opening down, so you have a slope of negative 3. So we're going to start here at 0, 0, because all the translation, transformation is, is a reflection. There is no horizontal or vertical. You go down 3 to the right one. Go down 3 to the right one. Go down 3 left one to complete the V. Down 3 left one. And then we ask ourselves the same question. What type of line do we use? And so for this one, I'm going to use a solid line because it is or equal to. So let me grab my solid line. Start of the vertex. It's opening down. And then this is a good example to end on because you have, we're going to do the test point approach for our graphing as well. And so when we're dealing with our test point approach for this problem, we have to figure out what point are we going to use. And what's interesting is every example we've done so far for the test point is we've always been able to use 0, 0 because it's not been on our line. But now we see 0, 0 is on our line. And so we have to pick some other point. Now, it does not matter what point you use. I try and use numbers that are smaller and involves easier operations. So if I can't use 0, 0, I'm going to use some point that's very close to 0, 0. So I'm going to go and choose 0, 1. And the reason why I didn't go down and choose any of this point is it's 0, negative 1. I'm working with a negative chance of mistake occurring, so I'm going to try and choose positive numbers. So my test point is 0, 1. And so now what I do is I take my 0, 1, I plug it in. Your y is 1. Is 1 greater than or equal to negative absolute value of 3 times 0? Well, absolute value of 3 times 0 is 0. There is no negative. Absolute value of 0 is 0, and you can't take the negative 0. So is 1 greater than or equal to 0? That is a true statement. And so then we're going to shade in the region created, or in the region that contains this point. And so that's everything outside of the V shape. So it's this entire region. So where there are two approaches for shading, you can do the test point or you can do the logic. When you're dealing with absolute value inequalities, I encourage you to use the test point approach. Less of a chance of mistake that way. With just linear inequalities, using the logic approach is pretty easy to figure out as well. Just be careful to always ask yourself, am I using a dashed or am I using a solid line? And then remember, whenever you see inequalities, you have to shade.